Welcome to the Tiger Interview Series. In this episode of the Tiger Interview Series, Dave, myself, and Evan Pratt are going to be talking about umpires. Why is there a shortage right now across the country? We're seeing this all the way down at the smaller levels with the youth guys, as well as all the way up to high school. What is the problem? That is the question that we are going to be tackling in this episode. We're going to be completely honest with ourselves as well as kind of evaluate what's the pulse of the community. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe to the channel. Give us five stars if you enjoyed this conversation. Also, we have another podcast called The Closing Pitch. If you'd like to subscribe to that, that is about people, culture, and how to create a winning lifestyle. We will see you on the other end. Welcome back, everybody, to the Tiger Interview Series. My name is Spiker Helms. In this episode, we are going to be talking about umpires. I have Evan Pratt. I have David Berkby. How do you guys feel about? You don't sound very excited <laughs> because it's not. <laughs> that a, was a, not a fun intro. I buddy. know it's not like the closing pitch. Golly, just I'm, I'm worried that the game is going to not have umpires. <laughs> That's what I'm like worried about. But then, like umpires is not like a fun conversation. Like, don't get mad if you're an umpire and be like, yeah, we are fun. Uh, you're you're a policeman and. <laughs> It's just one of those things when a policeman pulls me over. Yes, you're doing your job, but I'm still mad at you. <laughs> but it is kind of worrisome. If we don't have policemen in the world, then anyone can do anything and it becomes the movie Purge. So with umpires, if we don't have any umpires, we can't play this game because you can't put a coach out there because then he has a biased opinion and then it just it, it's going to be a huge mess. And you're probably wondering, what are you talking about? There is not an umpire shortage. There is most definitely an umpire shor shortage. Um, I would say it happened, started happening about five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And then COVID kind of accelerated that a little bit faster. Um, fast forward to now, 2022, um, there are actually numerous reports of um, not just umpires, but refs in general, um, the officials, there's not as many for high school sports and youth sports. And you're like, well, what do you mean? Well, I hate to say it. We are, we have not been very kind to our policemen. What do you guys take so far on, on the umpire shortage and where it's at right now? I mean, put yourself in their shoes for just a second. I, I mean, this will be my 13th year coaching, and obviously I played a long time before that. I I can't even count how many times that I've witnessed coaches, players, parents, other spectators over and over and over verbally abusing umpires for trying to do their job. I mean, I think there are probably there are some umpires out there that try to become spectacles of the, spectacles of the game and make it all about themselves, but that's not not many. Most are, are good people, just literally trying out there, trying to go out there and umpire a game to officiate a game. They make a bad call because they're humans, mm -hmm. and when they make a bad call, everybody goes nuts on them. You got coaches getting their face, cussing them out, telling them that they're absolutely horrible people you got parents and family members and spectators in the stands that are literally i mean i've seen fights i just saw something posted on social media the other day of a woman umpire yeah. who got hit in the face got a black eye over a call like what are we doing that's insanity and and, and i got a news flash for you folks they don't get paid that much that's a simple answer in my mind. I, do I want to deal with verbal abuse, possible physical abuse over and over and over and get told of what a absolute piece of crap I am by so many people for X amount of dollars? It's really not a net positive on my life. I mean, that's that's the actual math on it. Well, the argument there is that, well, I pay for the tournament, so I can do whatever the hell I Wrong. want. Like, no, you, you can't do whatever the <laughs> hell you want. <laughs> I don't go into a Porsche dealership and buy a Porsche and then burn the place down because I bought a Porsche. That doesn't make any sense. Right. Or any car, any any situation of that, of that magnitude. And then you're like, well, the pros do it. 
Uh, that's a different situation. You're dealing with a professional athlete who does have incentives in their contract for certain things that they do throughout the year, which it ends up being big money. You also have on the other end of that, the umpire who also has incentives, who also gets uh, monetized. Also on a that. professional umpire. That's their job. They yeah. understand how to talk that. They understand the give and take between coaches and parent or play, uh, coaches, players and themselves. And it's not, and it's not Frank who works at the hardware store and then does umpiring on the side. It's Todd who has like, this is my gig. This is the thing I am. I'm, I'm one of the best in the world at what I do. And yeah, if you have a problem with it, then we're going to have, we're going to have a talk because it's my profession and your profession. So let's, let's, knock this thing out but in youth sports you're you're volu- you're volunteers you're you're a volunteer coach Here, here's how you can look at it parents players coaches there are probably a thousand and fifty million things that go on in a baseball game soccer game basketball game that affect the outcome of a game there are a million things the umpire that makes one bad call probably a bad call doesn't affect the game the other million things that happened previous to that in the game affects the game. The The pitch that you didn't make in the fourth inning that allowed a home run, it's not the umpire's fault. The bad call he made at the bottom of the seventh to end the game that you lose by one run, that didn't cause you to lose the game. The, the earlier stuff that happened in the game caused you to lose the game. Think about it that way. It's not the umpire. Is, 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 he's doing the best they can. <clears throat> like you said, they're the normal Joe trying to get out there and – Make a couple of bucks and be be involved in sports. Maybe they can't be a coach. Maybe they don't have kids. <clears throat> they're trying to give back and be a part of the part of the whole process. Yes, they're gonna are they gonna make bad calls? Yes. Are you gonna make bad decisions on the field? Yes. We are. We all make bad decisions, good decisions. That's kind of how I have always looked at it. Those guys are trying to do what they're doing. They're you know. Again, we don't disagree. We don't agree with every call that they make. That this, that's human nature. But they are trying to do what they can, and understanding that a sliver of what they did maybe affects the game a little bit, but it does not the whole game. You get plenty more opportunity. You should have done better earlier in the game. <laughs> execute your skill earlier in the game. Work harder in the cage. Work harder on the mound mm-hmm. to execute your skill. So it, the umpire's decision making doesn't even come into a, in part of the game. Also. In professional baseball and college baseball, these coaches and these players develop relationships with these umpires. I knew most of the umpires by first name. Parents, you're yelling at a human being. You have no idea who they are. The coaches, do you even know the guy's first name? If you can say the first name, then then you have a relationship with them. And if you're yelling at them at that point, man, what a kind of human being are you? That's that's what I was gonna say. I think it's more of a culture issue that we're dealing with than anything. Well, I think thought, they're probably thinking like, "Oh, he's not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna see him ever again." Well, it, it, oh yeah, you will. <laughs> well, what, well, how do you think that that's okay? And what other aspect of life do you just get to blatantly send vulgar and yelling and just demean someone in any other case in in, in any aspect of being a human? You don't. There, there generally are consequences for it, you know. I mean, that that's an issue. the The other issue that I deal with because I've tried to make it a real point. No doubt, of course, I hear players come back into my dugout every single year and say, "Oh, it's the umpire's fault." Yeah, how did he call that player? Why he missed that call? It was three inches off the plate, and that's why I struck out and everything. I immediately try to nip that in the butt. Okay, I will not tolerate that as the excuse as to why we lost, as to why you got out. Okay, there's like Evan said, there's a million other things that go into why that happened. But it's a trickle down effect, guys. If if coaches, if you allow that to happen and in your post game speech being like, Yeah, guys, we played a pretty close game. I mean, you guys played great, but you know, that umpire just sucked. You know, that's why we lost. Well, what's the player going to do? He's going to get in the car. He's going to say that. He's going to say it verbatim. Then the parents are going to all get together. They're going to talk about it. And then it all just flows out. And the whole thing is back on the umpire, which is nonsense. I mean, I've, I hear that day in, day out of parents come in, you know, oh, Johnny had a great game. He, he really had five strikeouts or he had, he had six strikeouts, but he should have had nine. That umpire just was terrible. <laughs> I mean, they just say it over and over. And I'm not trying to demean you guys, but... Guys, 
at some point, it's not anyone else's fault. And we can't take that that approach anyhow because that's not going to make us do better. That's going to give excuses. That's going to do that. But going back to the umpire side on the culture side, we have to start teaching our players and our coaches and our and our fans to be better. Well, you have to be better. But the, uh, the argument would be, well, well, umpires are not open. Well, how do you expect them to be open? Like every umpire that I've dealt with since coming out of playing – it's been really weird from a culture standpoint. They have not been courteous until I start being courteous to them. Well, they're it. very guarded. They're extremely well, guarded. Like they're like, let's get this home plate conversation over with. Um, and then you guys go back to your dugouts and then let's just not talk to each other the rest of the game. And then we'll finish the game because I don't want to hear it from you. How do you blame them? I don't blame you can, them. You can disagree with an umpire all day long, but you need to respect them. Mm-hmm. You, you can, you can, yeah, that probably wasn't a good call. But you know, I, I got gotcha. you. You're you're working hard. Let's get the next one right. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to have that relationship with the umpire as opposed to yelling at him all the time, demeaning him all the time? Oh, you missed that one. You missed that one. You missed that one. And there's a way to do it. There's a, there's a way to have respect and also disagree with what the guy's doing. That's the nature of the beast with this game, with any sports. It, it just it's just how it is. But to me. I want that guy on my side. Mm-hmm. I want. I want. I'm going to bring him a cup of water in between innings every once in a while. I'm going to talk to him and say what's going on. Talk to him about it. nothing to do with the baseball. I'd always talk to them. When I'm coaching third base, I'm always talking to those guys. You know, how you doing? I a little bit. I would say hi. You know, I, if I knew him, how's your family? This, that, and the other. So I got to know those guys in, in college for sure because you get the same guys over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And especially when I was the operations guy in Missouri, I took care of the umpires. Those are my best friends. You want to take care of those guys as much as you can because you want those guys on your side. Type of thing. Not to get calls, not to be favoritism, but just to be a general, normal, kind human being. And you'll be surprised what a good question can do to an umpire. And not in a way of being vindictive or um, talking down to him, but actually being very curious on a question. And I learned this very late in my career, which... If I didn't agree with the call, I'd be like, how far, how, mo- how much far out will it, will it go? Is that as far as it goes? Like being curious. And then what the umpire does, he ends up starting to work for me. And he goes, yeah, Spike, that's, uh, that's probably as far as it goes. And then when, it do- when, he, when the pitch does go in that same spot, he usually says, it probably put it in the back of his head. He's like, oh, that was probably a little bit far out, but I can't admit to it. Yeah, exactly. So like it's being respectful in a way of a question can go very far um, and they're trying to get better at their craft just like how the players are trying to get better at their craft same with coaches Mm -hmm. like we love questions we love answering it we love talking about ourselves and when you talk to them about their zone that is them that is who they are and they love talking about them so if you're able to approach it that way that might solve a lot of the issues where it doesn't get into a verbal spat where you end up cursing up a storm and looking like a clown in front of everybody well there's, there's also two that one percent of umpires like dave was talking about that do have agendas they're they're out there the they're making the loud strike call they're making 100%. the over exaggerated call at first base of the outer safe everybody look at me here it is you just leave those guys alone you let them do their own thing you, you say hello to them How's your day? And, and letting you go up because there's no, there's literally no way you're going to get inside their 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 big side of armor. There's no way you're getting in there. You're no way you're becoming friends with this guy. There's no way you're influencing 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 this guy. It just doesn't happen with those type of tough guy shades on, leave me alone umpires. And you're like, oh, okay, all right, you know. Good, go go do your thing. But some, of, but most of them, when if you do get in there, they're like teddy bears. Oh, absolutely, mm-hmm. they're hundred percent like yeah, teddy the, bears. Yeah, the scruff exterior is just covering up something that they don't want you to see, and that's probably half the reason why they're umpiring. They're all good people. They're all good dudes. Mm-hmm. You just got to find a way in there. But most of the time, you let them do their business. Again, getting back to the shortage, we've got to find ways to entice more people to get out to watch games. I got a 16-year-old at Lafayette playing JV baseball. I've been to two games now. They've had one umpire twice now. That's scary. He's standing right – there's this old 65-year-old guy standing right behind the mound, behind the pitcher, and the whole time I'm thinking, one line drive, and we don't have an umpire. <laughs> Seriously, because he has to stand back there, and he's going to get trucked. He's an old guy. He's You can just tell he loves the game, loves the mm-hmm. He's always talking to the kids. This is the same guy twice. I'm like, this guy loves it. Dude's going to get trucked if he's standing behind the mound. It's like, come on. Let's get more guys out there so we've got guys in the right position. One, just for health uh, concern. Plus two, we can call the game better. So how do you switch the culture? How do you how do you stop that? Because this is all great in theory. This is all great in conversation. But like, 
I, I can't sit here and talk to all of like be at every Tigers game. I can't be at every Tigers, um, see every Tiger coach or parent and make sure like, oh, you guys having a good time and then, and then calling it out when I see it. How do you get, if you're a head, head coach and you're like, you know what, this is a serious problem. We've <clears throat> got to get ahead of this. Or if you're a parent, how does that, how do you affect well, that? How do you let, switch that around? Let's start attacking some of the stigmas that happen. Okay. I, I, I was thinking about this while you guys were talking. Um, a couple things that I hear very consistently and that I see very consistently are this coaches feel like they have to stick up for their players that those are my guys and they feel like the way that they have to stick up for them is going to attack mode on the umpire. Okay. They need to argue the call. They need to, they need to divert attention away from the player to them because those are my guys. Right. Or they so, want to chest bump the umpire. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Different story. Tony Vitello. <laughs> um, parents, those are your kids, right? So obviously you see your kid frustrated. He gets an at-bat taken away from a bad call, or he's safe by a mile of first base, and they call him out, and you want to just stand up because you see your kid frustrated. And, I, again, I've said this like 30 times on this podcast. I'm not a parent, so I don't know what that feels like. I don't. I have no idea, but I can assume – that you want to, like, at a moment's notice, want to go to war for your kid. I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to give you a piece of my mind to stand up for him and make my son feel better or my daughter, okay? So we started, We have to start attacking how to approach those situations, right? Coaches, there is a way to go about it to where your player feels like you have his back while you can also keep a working, good, respectful relationship with the umpire, all right? Situation, example horrendous call, whatever you want to say, you start to hear that you're, you don't even hear it. You just feel the blood boiling in the, in the air, right? Everybody's getting some tension. Do you go out there, make a scene cause, you know, get fired up, say, say a bunch of words, or do you calmly walk out there, talk to the empire where they, no fan can hear you. Hey, what did you have? How'd you see that call? I'm not, I'm not coming out here to argue. I want to know how you saw that call. Okay, well, I saw it differently. Here's what I saw. It, and you can ask for an appeal. You can do other things. And at the end of the day, even if you disagree, like Evan said, be like, all right, that's all big. Good. We're fine. I, pr- I appreciate your, your example, your, your explanation. Good. We got you next one. Okay. And you walk away. Because guess what? At the end of the day, all my yelling, all my disagreements, every time I've gone out and done that, I've never once got the call changed. Not my entire well, life. Never, if you have to go out there in the expectations of um, not getting the call oh, reversed. No, nope. you, but you're you're playing for the next inning. You're playing sure. for the third, the fourth, the fifth, the fifth inning. Like it's and going like I love that concept of going against the grain of the emotions that's happening onto the field. Right. I, I always enjoy doing that. I always love if the if the game is completely fast and it's speeding up on everybody, I love slowing the game down. Right. If the emotions are getting completely high, I will literally walk extremely slow. And I think I got that from Coach Gutton. Right. Just walking extremely slow to the umpire and then just like let's take a deep breath. Yeah. What actually happened? But no coach no umpires ever looked at me dead my eyes and go, Dave, you made a lot of solid points there, buddy. Uh, You know what? On further examination of that play, based on the evidence you have provided, uh, we are going to overturn it. Okay, everybody listen up. Uh, We are going to change the call. Dave made some really good points here. Okay, and we're going to change it. Cool. This never happened. Right. And same thing from a parent's. From a parent's perspective in that situation, I think there's a real learning moment there. I think there's a moment that's that I if if I were a parent and I were in your shoes and of course on the inside my blood's going to be boiling, I'm going to get mad, I'm going to get excited and I want to come unglued. But I think the real thing is because your your son's going to look back in the stands. They're going to look at you. And they're going to see how you react. If you have the reaction of yelling, screaming, blaming everybody else, that's going to trickle down into other things. If you have the reaction of you're looking at your son, be like, get the next one. It's fine. I know it's a bad call. What what are you going to do? You you can't change it. Overcome adversity. Get better. Change it next time. Okay? Keep working. It will be fine. It's a little bit of adversity. It's never hurt you. Okay? It's only going to make you better. Which one sets the better example? Which one grows the player? That would be my question. And on the the other side, too, if there's any umpires listening – 
The biggest thing that I found with umpires that they can diffuse a situation in a heartbeat. You've got everybody. You made the worst call ever, and you know probably know you made the worst call ever. Type of type of situation. Coach comes out and he's starting to yell at you. As an umpire, the, the thing you, you obviously don't want to do is accelerate the situation. Only thing you have to say, "Hey, coach, you know what? I may have missed that call." I just sorry. yell it out to everybody. Sorry, if some if some you know what? If some mom's yelling, just like yeah, I missed the call. Literally, that's, are you okay with that? I missed the call. I'm exactly. sorry. Exactly. That that's ex- <laughs> that is the best and easiest way. You don't keep yelling and keep yelling. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. Literally, be a human and go. Hey, you know what? I might have missed it. That's just how I saw it, but you may have saw it different. Sorry. I just – here we go. Next pitch. That's all you can do. I know. And as an umpire, that that's the easiest way to go. As a coach, you're going to go – uh, yeah, you know what? You're right. So you, well, don't miss the next one. You know, yeah, you know, you're, you're gonna you know, be you're gonna be mad as a coach, but you can respect the guy. Who goes, you know, right, I may have missed right. it. Sorry, because it, it's diffusing the situation. It's diffusing the like because that's all the person wants to hear is like you made a mistake, right? And then when you say it, they're like, oh, he he, he actually. Said what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, so all of a sudden, the next call that happens, it's close, and you, uh, he told me he probably he probably missed that one too, and I'm not yelling anymore. And you're diffuse the situation for later in the game or later in the tournament. The next time you have that guy, okay, I can respect that umpire. You're honest. You know what? Other other say too. You can. <laughs> I got that call right. You know <laughs> how many times have you ever have seen an umpire do that in a game? I got that one right. Yeah. You know, and the and especially the little league games. And that's where you get the joking and the like. Okay, here we go. Now you know that that umpire knows what's going on. He gets it. The guy that gets mad and keeps snowballing and rolling down the hill, and everybody gets all mad. It's no good for anybody. Yeah, expecting expecting that person that is a part time umpire to get every percentage call right is nearly impossible. The best in the world. What I forgot what the percentages were. They're like what ninety five to a hundred. Like they don't they don't get to a hundred. It's like ninety nine. Mm. They miss like strikes different locations. So if you're sitting there yelling at an umpire that's part time, it's like going into Chick fil A and yelling at the how they're not turning the fries over right <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> it just it just it's it's mind-boggling but guys we wanted to do this episode just to kind of get like put our thoughts out there um i always think that having good conversations around tough topics that no one's talking about is extremely important and this is a problem like it's starting to accelerate um noticed it five years ago and then now it's here and then obviously evan saying that there was only one umpire um at their games um, like, don't be surprised this summer if you only see one umpire out there and you're frustrated because there's only one umpire. Oh, the other thing too, I you got you got to give that guy support. If you see yeah. that guy with one umpire, don't be mad that oh this tournament sucks because they only gave us one umpire. No, go out there and congratulate that guy and say thank you for yeah. being here. That's what you need yeah. to do. Do the opposite of what you um, what your emotions are telling you. The other thing that should should really scare people is there are not a lot of young people getting into umpiring at all anymore. I mean, not at all. Well, There's so many it. other the options. That's yelling at the umpire is like, I don't want to be that guy, right? <laughs> and, and yeah. So, so that should really scare you because there's one or two situations that are coming. Everything's going to get automated, you know, and, and get passed down, and then you're going to have no way of arguing anything, or or you're just going to not have umpires in a couple of years. So we got to make a change. 100%. Guys, that's this episode of the Tiger Interview Series. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, we also do the Closing Pitch. That is the OG of our podcast. So if you want to go over there and subscribe to that channel, we talk about people, culture, and how to create a winning lifestyle. We talk a lot about baseball, obviously, because it's in our lives. Um, but yeah, we'd love to have you on both sides of that. And then also we have our YouTube channel, Rawlings Tigers. Go ahead and subscribe to that as well. Thanks, guys, and we will catch you in the next episode. See ya. Peace.